Thanks very much for joining me. I'm Lynn Sherritt. I want to talk to you today about the importance of success criteria. They begin with teachers understanding where they are in the curriculum documents. So they're the standards or they're the place where our curriculum alludes to what students need to know and be able to do. So when I think about success criteria, start with the learning intentions from the curriculum and, and move to the success criteria. They're so important to be co-constructed. So when I think of success criteria, I think of those specific descriptions of the attainment of the learning intention. So they're developed by students and teachers together. But I must say, first, teachers need to know where they are and then they need to know how they'll ensure that every student understands the success criteria. So once teachers understand where the success criteria are and what they're going to be for a unit of study, then it's important that teachers look at how am I going to plan so that all of the students understand and can live in how to be successful in this unit of study. And I want you to think about this. The success criteria need to be the same for all learners. So we don't differentiate the success criteria. Some success criteria for this student and some for these students. No, they're all the same. But what's important is that there's an entry point into the success criteria for every student. It's an equity issue for me. It's not some have these hard success criteria and other students have easier ones. They're all the same. What's important that is that teachers plan for the entry point into the success criteria and that all students see themselves being able to accomplish at least one of the success criteria. One of the other things that I think about with success criteria and ensuring that all students understand how to be successful is to co-construct those success criteria with the students. And one of the things that works really well is using a strong and weak example of a summative assessment, for example. It's not cheating to stu for students to know what's expected and what it might look like. And here's a strong example of that performance task and here's a weak one. And from these, we pull out what the success criteria are. For many of the discovery subjects, it's important that we develop the success criteria as a unit progresses. We don't give the students what success looks like before they've discovered it themselves and able to articulate it. So not only do we develop success criteria with students, we also ensure that students understand how to use the success criteria. So it's important for us as teachers to provide models of how we might go about using the success criteria. And in my work, I love it when I see students taking their work, their work sample, up to the success criteria and saying, now, have I got this? Have I got this? Have I got this? No, this is my next step. This is what I need to work on. So it's one thing to co-construct the success criteria and Again, another thing to then model how you use the success criteria in a classroom. And when we look at the success criteria at the end of a unit, we stand back as teachers and students and say, can every student who successfully, or I would say competently, uh, accomplishes each success criteria get an A? That to me is really important. That's having high expectations. And then finally, the last thing I want to say is that the success criteria are absolutely strategic in students using descriptive feedback, always against the success criteria, or teachers using descriptive feedback for students and with students, 
always referring back to the success criteria. So you can see how important they are. In classrooms, we need to also ensure that students use the success criteria in their own self-assessment and in their peer assessments. And finally, to me, students set their own goals for learning against those co-constructed success criteria. So this session is all about assessment literacy beginning with the right success criteria. It might take a little, of a little extra work. It's well worth it when students understand how to be successful in every unit of study in their work. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week.